Hello everyone, Elk here. So recently there's been a new skip found in Horizon Zero Dawn speedrunning, which uses a very clever strat, so I thought it would be nice to make a little video kind of showcasing it. Now this new skip has been a bit of a long time in the making, so uh, let's go over how we came up with the skip that you will be seeing here today. Now the skip takes place here on Eclipse Space, and this is the first version of the skip. You might remember this if you watch my no damage runs, where the idea was to climb up on the cliffs on the left hand side here, next to the normal escape path. This is so that you avoid all the slow climbing that is on the normal escape path. However, there is a bit of an issue with using the skip, and that is on the normal escape path there's a bunch of uh, checkpoints that you have to hit in order to progress the game, which causes a bit of an issue once you get to the zip line here and the very end of the quest. Now, because we skipped those checkpoints, the game now doesn't think that we have completed the quest, because all the checkpoints have to be hit in order for the quest to progress. So you remember in my no damage run I watched this cutscene in order to wait for Aloy to appear on the ground? Because if you skip the cutscene immediately, Aloy would simply fall from wherever she was in the cutscene, again because the game doesn't think that we have uh, finished the quest. Now this poses a bit of an issue, because to curse the darkness quest that the game still thinks we are on, as you can see right here, means that we are not allowed to fast travel, because doing this quest you are not allowed to fast travel. And the next place we would have to go in the speedrun is to go to Zero Dawn. Now the way to get around this issue and being able to fast travel would be to create another checkpoint and then restart from save, as that would allow the game to catch up and realize that you have completed the quest. Now if you're wondering why I don't just restart from save here, it's because it would simply send me back to my last checkpoint which is at the beginning of the escape and having to do it all over again, so that wouldn't really change anything. The solution I did in my no damage run was to go to the nearest campfire and quick save, which creates a checkpoint. As you can see right here, quick saving and then restarting from save will finish the quest and then allow me to fast travel. This obviously works well in a challenge run like the no damage run, where time doesn't matter, but in a speed run, this would simply take too much time, watching the cutscene for a little bit, and then have to walk all the way to a campfire would lose more time than the skip would save. So this meant that we had to find something that could create a checkpoint that would be much closer to where we finished the quest. Problem with that is that the campfire was the only thing remotely close to where we finish, as there was no other collectibles or similar things that could create a checkpoint close enough. This also meant that back in 2019, when the skip was first discovered, that people were also quickly discouraged from looking further into it, as there just simply seemed to be a way to make this possible, to save any time in a speedrun. So for now, that skip was only relegated to be used in challenge runs, such as the no damage run. A small thing that was discovered, however, was that you could survive the fall if you just waited a second before you paused and then skipped the cutscene. Now, as you will see right here, is Aloy will survive the fall here, and she will drop down in the water. As you can also see, this is why the cutscene was played until Aloy was on the ground, as she falls from where she is in the cutscene. And just to show you what it looks like, if you pause the cutscene immediately and skip, you will see Aloy fall to her death. So now the cutscene was no longer a factor, but still having to go all the way to the campfire still made it so that this would lose more time than it would save. Now this also meant that once again nobody was looking into it further, and also in the meantime, while people were slowly forgetting about this skip even existing, more smaller skips along the normal escape path was being found, which basically meant that now the skip was even less valuable in terms of time save. But then, in 2021, Everyday Aussie found this new skip. Keep moving or you'll die. So with this new skip, you would head up here and then do a very precise jump across the ravine, barely making it, and thereby getting back to the path you would normally arrive onto the tall neck on. And then simply head back to the gate and do another gate skip over it in order to make it to the repel much quicker than you would do with any of the other methods. However, you would still be skipping all the checkpoints that are along the intended path and therefore still needing a new checkpoint in order to progress. However, this did spark an interest in finding a way to making it work. Now this new skip and the interest in it quickly led people of the Horizon speedrunning community to start thinking outside the box on ways to create a checkpoint that would make this skip work. 
The clever idea people then came up with was to complete a side quest objective as soon as you completed the repel after this escape sequence, and thereby having a checkpoint that would allow you to restart from save and then of course progress on to Zero Dawn with fast travel. But what side quest has an objective that you can complete anywhere? Now that was the next thing to find out. The side quest that people came up with was Art Grata, or the Errand if you will, but let's just call it side quest to keep it simple here. Because the first objective you have to complete in the Art Grata side quest is to collect 5 pieces of meat, which can easily be done anywhere in the game. Especially if you are playing in New Game Plus, you could simply have boxes that already contain meat that you could loot right after you finish the Eclipse base. Thereby creating a checkpoint that would allow you to restart from save and progress the game. Sadly however, Art Grata is simply too far away from the current speedrun route in order to be viable, as it takes too long to go to Grata and start her quest in order for it to save any time in the speedrun. So once again we needed another quest that had a similar objective but that was much closer to the speedrun route. The good thing is however it didn't take long for people to find a quest that was very close to the speedrun route. Because Everyday Aussie discovered that in Mother's Crown when we had to talk to Maria during the speedrun there's a side quest you can start that has a similar objective to Osgrada. And that side quest is Log of the Hunt, because Log of the Hunt's first objective, or one of its first objectives, is to collect four boar skins, something that can be done any way you want. And with a little bit of thinking outside the box, you realize that this can actually be done quite easily in a New Game Plus speedrun. As a runner could simply set up their New Game Plus file to already have three boar skins in their inventory, which would count towards the quest, and then cleverly have one box in their inventory that would contain one boar skin that they could loot after Eclipse Space, thereby collecting the four skins, creating the checkpoint, and then being able to restart from save. And just to show you what it looks like in your New Game Plus file, you would simply just have three boar skins right here in your resources that you would then use for speedruns alongside all the other resources you already have, and these would then count towards the objective. Then the last boar skin would be right here in a scavenger dark box, because these boxes contain skins, and there's a chance it would have the boar skin. And now you might be wondering, but isn't what's in the box random? And you would be right, but here comes the other clever part of it. When you're setting up your new game plus save file for this, you would simply buy scavenger dark boxes until you get one with the boar skin in it. If you then open the box but don't loot the content of the box, the things in the box will always stay the same. So once you have a box, just open it and don't loot it. That way when you start your new game plus run, it will always have a boar skin in it. So that is how we can manage to put this clever strat together and finally achieve that checkpoint at the end of the eclipse space in order to make the speedrun strat viable. Now let's have a look at how it compares against the old strat here. So you will see a timer in the top right corner of the screen, where it says the old strat took 21.3 seconds to navigate through Mother's Crown here. Of course we have to start with Mother's Crown because now that we are doing Log of the Hunt, we are losing a bit of time having to talk to the quest giver uh, here in Mother's Crown and a little bit out of our way compared to the straight line we normally take through here. So a little time will be lost here, but hopefully made up for in the Eclipse space itself. So you can see here when we come across the bridge we'll lose around 5 seconds in Mother's Crown here, compared to just doing the strat we used to do. And now on to the Eclipse Space part of the skip here, where you will see the timer has changed a little bit, the time started where we already have added the time of Mother's Crown, and now in the old strat comparison the 117.3 you see is a combination of the Mother's Crown with the old strat and the entire escape sequence with the old strats here at Eclipse Space as well. So we have to beat a total time of 117.3 here in order to be faster. And since I haven't showed it yet, here's how you end the strat here after you get to the repel point. So you'll see here, as soon as I get to the repel here, I will skip the cutscene. And then while I'm in midair, I open the inventory and loot the boar skin from the box, completing the objective. Thereby restarting from save, because now a checkpoint has been created that will make the quest finish. Oddly enough, we are gonna respawn back in the beginning of the escape, but notice that the quest is still completing here when I'm loading in. And from there we of course fast travel towards Sunfall, where the next objective is in the speedrun, which is the Zero Dawn section of the run. 
And if you have paid attention to the timer right here, you'll notice that this skip in total doesn't actually save that much time. However, I could have done this a little bit more cleanly than what I showed here in the video and gotten, you know, maybe close to even an 8 second time save here. However, this is more likely what you're averagely gonna save in this run. Sadly, this skip doesn't actually save that much time, but I thought it was cool to share nonetheless just because of how clever the strat used in order to achieve this strat was. But, you know, the bad news is this skip is really hard and it doesn't save too much time. And sadly, that is the nature of this skip, because this jump across the ravine is incredibly precise and it's gonna take a lot of practice for runners to get this skip consistently in runs, especially considering it's an hour into the run and if you're on good pace it's gonna be very nerve-wracking to go for this. Also the thing is if you fail it just once you're not gonna save any time from it, save it, fail it more than that and you're losing even more time. The same goes for jumping across this gate here which is also gonna take a lot of practice to get the handle up and again if you fail it you're probably not saving any time from the skip. So that is the sad reality of this skip right now. But you never know, runners can always practice and practice and who knows, maybe this becomes a regular thing in runs. Maybe once people start pushing the absolute upper limit of what is possible in these runs as well. But even if we runners are able to do this incredibly well over time with a lot of practice, there's sadly still an element of luck as you will see here in this clip. Where a Deathbringer shoots the rock above which hits me and knocked me away from doing the jump. They can also hit you with a missile or one of the human enemies can hit you with a fire or mid-jump, preventing you from making it. And here is just another clip for good measure showing you that it does happen fairly often. So yeah, sadly this strat is extremely clever, but it's gonna be a while before we see it being a more common thing in the runs. And even then it's only gonna be a thing amongst the top runners. However, I do not want to end this, this video on a sad note. So here's another skip that was also recently you found on right after you defeat Helis, which is once you have killed him like you normally do here on New Game Plus Ultra Heart by shooting him twice in the head with the ice cannon, right after the fight you will simply jump around and do a very precise jump in order to get down to Ritz defense a little sooner. So you'll skip the conversation here and then you turn around, jump on this little fence and then onto this pillar thing and jump far enough so you actually hit the checkpoint that starts Ritz defense. And even if you die, you can still restart from safe, and you'll spawn right in the middle of the Ritz defense fight here. And even though this strat is not as clever as the one in the Eclipse Space, this one would probably on average save more time than the entire Eclipse Space strat would do. This strat is also a lot more easy to perform compared to the things you have to do in Eclipse Space, at least in my opinion. Sadly, it is just the reality of speedrunning sometimes that the things that are not the most flashy or the most clever are not always the things that are gonna save you the most time. However, I still wanted to make a video covering this new Eclipse Space strat because I still feel like it's interesting to see the clever strats people can come up with when they simply think a little outside the box. And who knows, the history of how this entire skip even came to be is very long and the history might not even be over yet. Because if people continue to think outside the box, maybe it's only a matter of time before people find a way to make it more consistent and we'll start seeing it more regularly in people's speedruns of the game. So to end off here, I also want to give a huge thanks and shout out to Everyday Aussie, a fellow speedrunner of Horizon Zero Dawn. He was the main contributor to this entire skip and I'll leave a link to his uh, Twitch channel and his YouTube in the pinned comment below this video. So go check him out if you're interested in more Horizon Zero Dawn speedrun. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little video about the story of this skip. And if you did, a like and a comment on this video would help me out a lot. And consider subscribing for more content like this. Also, if you're interested, I speedrun this game almost daily on Twitch. And there will be a link to my Twitch stream in the description below. It would be very nice to see more people there. So thank you guys for watching and I hope you guys have a great day.